Oh, it's, good Lord heavens. It's evening now. It's, it's almost Big Bang Theory time. And <laughs> we're playing Run With Film. Yeah, welcome back to the world of dark, except at the moment it's quite light, but it still has bad sound. I found a negative the other day, which, um, how can we say it, would actually work better as a print in the negative. So to do that, the I suppose the easiest way is to make a, an interneg, which is actually going to be a positive, and then use that to print from. Now the image itself, or the, sorry, the original neg is um, 6, 7 off the RB and the only film I have with which to make the interneg is this stuff, it's back to the nuclear emulsion, it's, it's proving to be a really useful kit. Uh, sorry about the flare down here, that's because there's a 200 watt light bulb above my head. And we're going to use that. So that means it is back to the world of dark. It's the bottom end, this is the lens carrier of the Durst. No, it's not. It's the lens carrier of the Devere. I wish it didn't both begin with D. It's a DF5504. It's my big enlarger. It's the one that's causing all the rattling and humming noises. That's actually the lens stage there. And that's the board in it. You might be able to see an image. You might not. But if I turn that out. No. In it there is a negative of the image I want to reproduce as a positive in order to print from the positive. Uh, on my borderless easel, which only runs up to 10 by 8, I've marked various sizes, one of which is 5 by 4. So we now have to make that project a 5 by 4 image onto there. You know what, it might be easier with that out of the way. That's better. Now I need to create a 5.4 image on there that I want to reproduce. That's as low as it's going. I can't get a grain finder under there. Oh, that's better. That is now pin sharp. We turn that down quite a lot. Get rid of the green. This is where the fun really starts. This is because I now have to close the viewfinder on the camera. So I might be able to see what you're seeing. I don't know. You might not be able to see anything now on. So we do a test strip. Test strip. And let's do it. 3, 6, 9, 12. And I want the scissors. So I'm not going to use a whole sheet of film to make a test strip. Uh, I decided I didn't like the brown, so that can go out. The red's all white, partly because it's pure red, and partly because it's the other side of the room. Film. I 
put the paper on the good bit, cut bit there, card on top. Back in it, bag. It's the first time I've done a test strip on a bit of film. Well, this is it. It's the first time for uh, about 25 years. 25 years? Mm, maybe a bit less. Because you've got to remember, when I talk about these big numbers, you'll think, oh, 25 years, how oh, million, many millions of years old is he? Um, you know, aren't many millions of years old, because I started doing this when I was about three. Uh, okay, testy strip time. Or not. There we go. Fill them. And today we are developing in Ilford Multigray. The standard paper developer, diluted, one part developers, nine parts water. Exactly according to the book for developing Ilford Multigray paper. And I'm putting some <laughs> 1981 expired nuclear emulsion in it. Probably why I'm getting such a full set of tones. This is the positive, this is the interneg, which is actually an interpositive, uh, on the light box. I'm quite impressed. There's a heck of a lot of detail in here. There's a huge tonal range going on there, considering that this is a supposedly an extremely high contrast line film that was designed either for copying documents or picking up radioactive particles as they fly through the atmosphere. Um, we are going to use that then now to create a negative image, uh, which we will do in the next episode, in the dark room on paper. Hmm, that'll be fun. We'll see what that looks like. I might also create a negative in 5.4 so that I can put the two together, sandwich the two together, and get some very interesting effects indeed. 
I've also found some fine grain release positive in 35mm because that's what they made it in. That'll be interesting because we'll have to explain what fine grain release positive is. But that's all for future episodes. See you again soon.